students, welcome to Sunil's tutorial. I'm Sunil Nirvani and today we'll be doing this chapter called as Economic Value Added. We want to do illustration 1. We want to start with illustration 1, page 25. They're saying that the following data pertains to three divisions of M Incorporated. The company's required rate of returns on invested capital is 8%. Now, they give you data for three uh, divisions, division A, B and C. Right, let's start now. For division A, they have said that income is 4 lakhs, thus we do division A, and the sales margin is 20%, right? Division A. You have income and sales margin. That's your profit per percentage, right? If income is hundred, sales is uh, sales margin. That's your profit is twenty percent. They've given you that your income is four lakhs. They've given you that your income is four lakhs. In that case, how much will your sales margin be? Someone please calculate. X is going to be four lakhs into 20 divided by 100. Some of these have been calculated. Some mistakes from it. They must have given you. Okay, the income is given to you as 4 lakhs. The income is given to you as 4 lakhs. That's your profit margin is given to you as 4 lakhs. This is, guys, they are giving you income. That's your sales margin and sales. So if your sales is 100, your income is 20. They give you income is 4 lakhs. In that case, how much will sales be? 20 lakhs. 4 lakhs into 100 divided by 20. Some of these calculate? 20 lakhs. 20 lakhs. Right? Next. They have also given you, income is given to you besides that, they have given you capital turnover ratio. Right? Now, capital turnover ratio, Capital turnover ratio. Capital turnover ratio is nothing but sales upon average capital. Sales upon average capital employed. Capital turnover ratio is given to you as 1. You just found out the sales to be 20 lakhs upon average capital employed. In which case you will come to know that your average capital employed is 20 lakhs. Right? Next, what else have they given you? Uh, okay. Now that I know capital em employed, I can find out returns on investment. Returns on investment is given by the formula profit upon capital employed into 100, right? Profit we have, income is given to me as 4 lakhs. Capital employed you just found out is 20 lakhs into 100. 20%. 20%. So my returns on investment I have found out. What else have I got to find out? I have to find out my uh, residual income, right? Or your economic value added. Your economic value added is nothing but net operating profit after tax minus cost of capital, right? Net operating profit after tax, income is given to you as 4 lakhs minus cost of capital. Cost of capital, right at the beginning they said that returns on invested capital is 8%. So it is going to be 8% on capital employed. My capital employed is, we just found out as 20 lakhs. So this is 4 lakhs. Someone please help me calculate this. Uh, 1 lakh 60,000. 1 lakh 60,000. 2 lakh 40,000. This is for division. Are you getting no That's my income. Then I get the income. Yeah, the, the income. Right? That's for division A. Now let's see for division B. Division B. Let's see what is the data given to me for Division B. They've given me sales, they've given me income 
they were also giving me the average investment, right? Uh, since sales and income is given to me, I can find out my profit percentage, that's my sales margin. Sales margin is nothing but profit upon sales into 100. Right? Profit. Now, the income is given to you as 20 lakhs. Sales is given to you as 1 crore. Into 100, someone please help me calculate this. This is going to be 20% if I'm not mistaken. Right? That's your sales margin. Next, the, yeah, you want to ask me sales margin now? Uh, because that's a question mark there. See, for division B, you have to find out the sales margin. So, three things are given to me. I'm mm -hmm. trying to find out whatever data is not given to me. Okay. The so first data that was not given to me is sales margin. Next, uh, the next thing they've asked you is capital turnover. Capital turnover is nothing but sales upon average capital employed. Right? Sales is 1 crore upon average capital employed. Average capital employed is, they've given you, average investment is 25 lakhs. Yeah. So my capital turnover ratio is going to be 4. Next, the third thing that they've asked me is, the third thing that they've asked me is, returns on investment. Right? Let's see this. Returns on investment. That's profit upon capital employed. Profit is your income. Income is given to me as 20 lakhs. Capital employed. Capital employed we, uh, is given to you as 25 lakhs into 100. Someone please help me. Is 80 percent. Right? Next, let's find out for division C. So we found out, uh, no, we still have to find out my residual income. Right? My EDA. Economic value added is no fat minus cost of capital. Now, no fat net operating profit, profit is 20 lakhs. Cost of capital, cost of capital, now you have 8% is the returns expected on capital employed is 25 lakhs. Someone please help me get this. So that's 20 lakhs minus, how please help me get this, 8% on 25 lakhs. 8% on 25 lakhs is? 2 lakhs. 2 lakhs. So in that case, this is going to be 18 lakhs. Now let's see for Division C. Now Division C seems interesting because the data given to you here is, they have neither given you sales, nor have they given you income, nor have they given you average investment. They've given you sales margin, they've given you capital turnover is not given to you, returns on investment is given to you and EVA is given to you, right? Okay, now let's assume that, let's let assume that sales is equal to X, okay? Now they've given me sales margin, sales margin is nothing but profit upon sales into 100. Sales margin is given to you as 25. Profit is given to me as, have they given me the profit? No. They have neither given me the profit nor have they given me the sales. Profit and sales both are not given to me. I cannot use this first. In that case then I will use the other formula that's my Capital turnover. Have they given me capital turnover? No. That is also not given to me. I can find out returns on investment. Right? Returns on investment is profit upon capital employed. Returns on investment is profit upon capital employed. Returns on investment is given to me as 20%. Since it is given to me in terms of percentage, I have to multiply by 100. So 20% is 
profit upon capital employed. So in that case, let us assume the profit to be x. If I assume profit to be x upon capital employed into 100, so in that case you will get capital employed is 5x, right, take this 20 down, see this will be x upon 20 into 100. So in that case my capital employed is going to be equal to 5x, right. Now, my EBA is given to me as 1 by 20,000. EBA is no fat minus cost of capital. EBA is given to me as 1 lakh 20 thousand. Go on framing your equations. Net operating profit after tax is not given to you. Profit you have assumed as X. Cost of capital. Cost of capital is 8%. 8% on capital employed. Capital employed you just found out as 5X. So I can say 1 lakh 20 thousand is 100x minus 40x. That's 60x upon 100. Everyone's understood how I got this. Cross multiply 100x. 100x minus 40x. So I'll get 1 lakh 20 thousand into 100 divided by 60 will give you x. Someone please say that. 2 lakhs. So profit is 2 lakhs. Once I know profit, then I can find out capital employed. Capital employed, we had already found out as 5x. So capital employed should be 5 into 2 lakhs. So, 10 lakhs. Uh, right. Next, I can also find out my sales. Sales profit. Right. Sales is 100. Profit margin was given to you as 25. You just found out profit is 2 lakhs. So in that case you can find out sales. Sales is going to be 2 lakhs into 100 divided by 25. 8 lakhs. 8 lakhs. Did we find out everything? I found out sales. I found out profit. I have to profit. Profit margin I have to find out. Profit margin is given to me, 25%. Now I have to find out capital turnover, right? E. Let's try to find out capital turnover. So where do you get profit as 25 from? Uh, look at the sum, they give you sales margin is 25%. Turn the page, turn the page. Sales margin, first yeah. thing right at the top. Right at the top. That means that sales is 100, profit, profit is 25. 25. Okay. Next, uh, let's move on ahead. I have to find out, I found out sales, I found out capital employed, I found out income. The only thing I need to find out now is capital turnover. Capital turnover is sales upon average capital employed. Sales you just found out as 8 lakhs. Upon average capital employed. Average capital employed is 10 lakhs. 0.8. Capital turnover is going to be 0 0.8. Right? That finishes that sum. Next, let's move on to the next sum, guys. Can you please see the next sum? Now, I'll find out a little extra data in the next sum, which is not given to you. So, let's just see the sum. They've given you income statement and balance sheet of 5 star limited is given to you. Okay? They've given you income statement, they've given you balance sheet. They said that cost of equity and cost of debt is 10% and 12% and the company pays 30% corporate tax. From the following information given to you, given you are required to calculate EBA, uh, MBA on the basis of market value of capital employed. Right? Now, the first thing that you need to find out is, right, let's start with this one. The first thing I need to find out is my NOPAT, for which I need to know my profit after tax. Profit after tax, first, profit after tax, if you see your income statement, right at, uh, below they have given you that profit after tax is 190, right? That's the first thing I need to find out. We go stepwise, right? 
The next thing I need to find out is interest. Again, that should be given to you in your income statement. If you see your income statement, the interest is given to you as 20. Right? The next thing I need to find out is my net operating income or expense. That's my non-operating, non-operating expense, non-operating expense, non-operating expense, non-operating income loss, right? Let's see. Now, what do you understand by non-operating expenses? These are those expenses which are not incurred on goods. Similarly, non-operating income is those that income which is not earned from goods. Right? Now if you look at your non-operating expenses, in your non-operating expenses you have, um, they have given you, let's see this, um, non-operating income they have given you two things, they have given you interest on investment and profit on sale of old assets. So in, in non-operating income they have given you interest, interest on investment which is 10 lakhs, rupees are in lakhs and profit on sale of old assets which is 5 lakhs, that's 15 lakhs and non-operating expense they have given me as uh, the only non-operating expense that you have is loss on sale of old machinery which is 5 lakhs right, so in that case I can write this as you will have your net non-operating expense is going to be equal to net non-operating expense it is going to be negative 10 lakhs which I can write it this way 5 minus 15 problem right now once you have this then you can find out your non-operating profit after tax now there are some authors who do it differently. I will show you both the methods. Right? One I will show you what we are doing and then I will show you the other method also. Now non-operating profit is nothing but your uh, profit after tax less add interest and add or less your non-operating expenses. Right? So in that case add or less non-operating expenses depending upon whether you get uh, positive or negative. I will show you the sum by two methods so that you have whatever method is explained to you in your college you can use that. Now profit after tax is 190, interest is given to you as 20, your non-operating expenses are given to you as 5, non-operating income is 15, so this is going to be 129. Now this is one method of doing this. There is another method of calculating non-operating uh, profit. What I will do is, first I will show you the sum by one method, if I have some then by the other method. The other method, I will just brief you up with that, is the method that you use, uh, that you have learnt in your third sem, where you make a vertical income statement and in your vertical income statement automatically you will get your non-operating profit after tax. You have, see, you want let me just do the sum by one. You can do the method which you had taught us earlier. That yes, you can, can do it. For the can, yes, yes, you can use any method. I'll show you both the method. I'll teach you both the methods. So just in case if your teacher in college is insisting on a, a particular method, I can you can use that method. Let me do the sum by first method, then I'll show you by the second method also. Right? We'll do the same sum twice by two methods. Okay. Now the next thing that you have to find out. So we found out our non-operating profit after tax. Next, I need to find out my weighted average cost of capital. Weighted average cost of capital. Again, here there are two ways of calculating this. One, by using an algebraic formula. One, by using the method that you've learned in your cost of capital. You can do it by any method. Either way, you will end up getting the same answer, right? Uh, I would rather prefer, prefer you are doing it by the cost of capital because that chapter you all have already done, right? So you can do it by algebra or by that method. I am showing it to you by the cost of capital method. 
right? Let's consider this sources. Let's look at our balance sheet. Balance sheet is made up of equity share capital and long term loans. Right? Amount. The amount in the balance sheet uh, for equity share capital is 50 lakhs and long term loans is 60 lakhs. Okay? Next. Find out proportion. Right? How do I find out proportion? This is 110. So 50 divided by 110 into 100. Some of you know people. 50 divided by 110 is? Actually, 100. Uh, we take 150, right? Retained earnings? No, retained earnings. Because retained earnings don't have a cost of capital. Why should retained earnings have a cost of capital? 45.45. This is 45.45. That is it. I'll just show you. Right? Long term loan. Someone got it. 54.54. Right? Now, I need to find out cost of capital. Now, fortunately for us, they have given you that, if you read the sum the last night, the cost of equity is 10%. And the cost of debt is given to you as 12%, but the tax rate is 30%. So I can find out cost of debt is I, 1 minus tax rate. Cost of debt is 12, 1 minus tax rate. Tax rate is given to you as 30%, so 0 0.3. So 12 into 0 0.7, can someone 8.4 8 So 8.4 percent So my weighted average cost of capital is going to be 45.45 into 10 percent which is going to be nothing but 4.545 Similarly 54.54 into 8.4 percent Can someone tell me how much is that? 4.58 Right, add this 4.581 so 6 12, 11, 9, 9.126%. So my weighted average cost of capital, therefore I can say weighted average cost of capital is 9.126%. Okay, once this is done, we found out this. Next, next I need to find out capital employed. Right? Now, capital employed, I'll show you capital employed by two methods. One, if I use my vertical analysis, if I use vertical analysis, what is capital employed? Capital employed is my total sources, which is nothing but equity share capital plus preference share capital plus reserves and surplus plus loan funds, which is comprised of long term loans and short term loans. That's as per my vertical analysis. Or there's another alternative, my cap actual capital employed. If I'm borrowing this much, whatever money I've borrowed, that is my actual capital employed. Financially speaking, in your balance sheet, in your financial statement, whatever you may show. But what is your actual capital employed? The money that you have borrowed, that is your actual capital employed. What is the money that you have borrowed? You have borrowed money, you have borrowed equity, there is no preference here, and you have borrowed long term loans. The reason why I prefer this because this particular method is because this is, in my personal opinion, this is financially more correct. Because if I'm going to find out my returns, I have paid you an interest and I want to know how much is the exact amount of loan that I have taken from you. Now the retained earnings is not the loan that I have taken from you. If I consider that in my capital employed, then the answer that I would get would not be the actual amount of uh, rate of interest I am paying to you. That is the reason why when you are calculating this, we don't consider this. Right? Uh, in terms of vertical analysis, yes, you have uh, equity as I told you. Equity plus preference plus reserves and surplus plus long term loans plus uh, retained earnings, everything comes in here. That's your total sources side. Right? But that would give me an answer which would, which would not be an actual answer. Moreover, when you are, you know, when your paper goes for correction, you have uh, the, uh, the whole moderator, even I've seen this. They tell you that when a student has done a some alternative method, you have to consider the alternative method. It is not necessary that your answer matches with that answer booklet, right? Okay, let's see this. Yeah. 
right? And this I presume is prescribed, yeah, it's prescribed textbook. My memory serves me right. Let's, let's, yeah. right. Now let's start this equity. Equity is nothing but 50. And I'm giving you a logical reason why I'm not considering retail earnings. I've taken a loan of 100 rupees from you. I'm paying you an interest of 6 rupees. That means I'm paying you 6% interest. But I've taken a loan from of 100 rupees from you and I had a profit of say 10 rupees. Can I say that the interest I'm paying you is 6 upon 110? No. Would that be mathematically correct? No. So should I consider the retail earnings? That is the reason I don't consider it. Because I don't feel that that's mathematically correct. Right? Long term loans, and that's what is given to you in the textbook also. Uh, long term loans are given to you at 16. That is 110. So that's my capital employed. Right? Now, let's move on ahead. Let's find out, guys. Let's find out our NOPAT. Uh, NOPAT we've already found out. Let's find out EVA. Economic value added is NOPAT minus weighted average cost of capital into capital employed. Right? NOPAT we had already found out as 129 minus weighted average cost of capital. Weighted average cost of capital is 9.126% upon 100 into capital employed I just found out as 110 right so that's 129 minus 10.04 10.04 you can just do 110 into 9.216 percent no? yeah you get the same answer yes you get the same answer 118.96 118.96 so my economic value added is going to be uh, 118.96 right now we found out EVA. The next thing they have asked you to find out is MVA, right? Now, let's see how do we find this out, right? First, let's see what is the market capitalization, right? Uh, for which I need to know, have they given me the PE ratio, right? Uh, yes, they have given me the PE ratio, right? They have given me the PE ratio, they have given me uh, the, have they given me the earning per share? Yes, yes. they have given me the earning per share also in my vertical analysis. Right? So first of all I can say that PE ratio is nothing but MPS upon EPS. Right? PE ratio is given to you as uh, 2. Right? PE ratio is given to you as 2. EPS uh, is, MPS is not given to you. EPS they have given you is 23.9, 23.8 sorry not 9, 23.8. So in that case 47.6, 47.6, right? My market price of the share is 47.6, right? Next, let's find out how many shares you have. Number of shares is equity share capital. Divided by face value of the share. Equity share capital is given to me as uh, 50 lakhs divided by face value of each share is 10. Right? So that is 5 lakh shares. The number of shares that I have is 5 lakhs. Right? In that case, let's find out market capitalization. That means if I sell my company as on today, how much money will I get? I am going to be selling 5 lakh shares and each share is going to be sold in the market for 47.6. So that's 5 lakhs into 47.6. Excuse me? 238. 238. So my market capitalization is going to be 238. Right? Now, this is the market value of my firm. What is the book value of my firm? What do we understand by book value of the firm? Book value of the firm is, that means if I dissolve the firm today, what is the net amount that is payable to the owners of the firm? Value is the net worth. Yeah, right? 
So book value is nothing but the network. I, I'll just explain the theory. Book value of the firm is that if I sell the entire company today, what is the net amount that is payable to the owners, which is also called as the net worth, which is nothing but equity plus retail. Right? Equity share capital is given to you as 50. Retained is given to you as 40. The total amount is 90. So my net worth is 90. Next. MBA. MBA, market value. How much has the company gained in the market on the basis of its goodwill over the actual value of the firm? It is going to be nothing but, that's your MV of the firm, which is nothing but market capitalization minus the net worth, which is going to be 238 minus 90, 148. Right? Now that we have found out this, we can find out a couple of more ratios here. Uh, Cost of, uh, I've already explained to you how to find out net operating profit, uh, invested capital returns on capital employed. Now, there's just one other factor that you need to know is your beta factor. Now, what is beta factor? Beta factor is defined as the risk in investing in a particular share. Beta factor Beta factor. How do I define beta factor? Beta factor is nothing but the risk. It's a risk measuring factor for different capital allotment. Higher the beta factor, higher is the risk. And it is calculated on based on the stock prices uh, for each year separately. Right? Now, uh, unfortunately, you don't have data which will help me find the beta factor in this case. I'll just write the formula and then I'll come up with the data and I'll help you get the beta factor from. But uh, from they have to find the beta factor, they'll be giving you. Uh, they will, if they ask you only then. In this time, I'll put it in data okay. and then I'll show you how to get the beta factor. For example, let us consider. For example, uh, let us consider that. I'll just first write the formula down and then I'll show you. Uh, beta factor is nothing but there are different methods of getting beta factor. One uh, is called as n times, you use your regression formula, n times sigma xy minus sigma y sigma y upon n times sigma x square minus sigma x the whole square. That's the actual mathematical formula to find beta factor. That's how it was found on Sensex. That's how you find the beta factor. The other method to find out beta factor would be wherein you could also find out beta factor. This is one method of finding it out. The other method would be cost of equity using the cost of equity formula. Cost of equity is Rf plus beta times Rm minus Rf. Right? So in which case you would have uh, Rm is the market risk, beta is the beta factor and uh, Rf is your uh, uh, rate of interest for treasury bills. Right? So do we get this thing here? So those, that's another method of finding a beta factor. You have multiple ways of finding this out, right? Now, here, okay. For example, in this particular sum, they could have given you that, suppose if they give you, guys, we we'll continue this here. Suppose if they give you, just take, let's consider an additional data in this sum. They, if they give you that market rate of return, If 
If the market rate of return is given to you as 15%, the interest rate on treasury bonds, interest on tre T bonds, they are called as T bills or T bonds, is say 6.5% and beta factor is say 1.2. You have to find out the equity risk premium or you have to find out, let's assume that they ask you to find out the cost of equity. First of all, I can say that I could use this formula. They have given me that returns expected is 15%. If I don't want any returns, if I want to play a safe game, if I invest in treasury bills, my treasury bills are giving me 6.5%. The volatility of the market is 1.2. In that case, my cost of equity would be 6.5% plus 1.2 into 15 minus 6.5 so that is 6.5 plus 1.2 so 16.7 is the answer 8.5 this is how much? 8.5 this is 8.5 right 15 minus 6.5 is 8.5 some of these help me calculate this 16.7 the net answer yeah. 16.7 so in that case your cost of equity would be 16.7. So this RM, RF, ah. they are going to be market data or return is RM. And the the return that RM you expect is, is the, see, the return that you expect from the market is called as uh, RM and uh, treasury bill rate they will give you. Okay. Right? What so RF is basically treasury bond bill. Ah. Interest on T bills, the government bonds. Mm -hmm. Right? Do we get this? Right? Mm -hmm. That's it, there is no that's more. There is nothing else. Be, this is the smallest part. Yeah, that's the smallest part. Unless they tell you to find out by regression. Where then they will give you data for two years. Right? Right? Okay, we will stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.